in this video we are going to discuss about initial and boundary conditions along with the steady and unsteady state heat transfers so far uh, in the previous videos uh, we discussed as uh, we desired uh, the general heat conduction equations uh, in a uh, cylindrical spherical and cartesian coordinates all the equations uh, that we desired so far we obtain with uh, the differential terms like a uh, uh, dou square t by dou x square, dou square t by dou y square, dou, dou t by dou t like that. And uh, such uh, differential equations as, uh, need to be solved further in order to get uh, the uh, solutions for such equations when we apply to the case. Suppose uh, the general heat conduction equation in Cartesian coordinates if applied to a cubical object uh, as a, a wall, then uh, the differential terms are to be eliminated. We need uh, the equation in plain uh, terms of temperature and heat with respect to the respective dimensions. In order to get them, uh, we, not, we need to solve the equations and uh, for the solution, we need these initial and boundary conditions. That is the necessity why we need to learn uh, the initial and boundary conditions. Now let us see the initial and boundary conditions. The initial conditions are those uh, which will give us the information regarding temperature at the beginning of the heat transfer process we call that as a initial time or the initial moment of time right the initial conditions which will gives us the temperature details in a body at the beginning of the time which means uh, at a time t small t is equal to zero what is the temperature capital t of the body or uh, at a time small t is equal to zero what is the heat that is given to the body q they are known as the initial conditions of the body. These initial conditions are mostly helpful for the transient or unsteady state heat at transfer problems. Right? The steady state heat transfer never depends on uh, time. So there is no necessity of using uh, this uh, initial condition for steady state heat transfer. They are mostly useful for transient or the unsteady state heat transfer. We are going to learn what is this unsteady state, what is the transient uh, heat transfer in the uh, next slides. Right? The initial conditions as a gives us the details regarding uh, the temperature at the beginning of the heat transfer process and mostly useful for transient or the unsteady state heat transfer process. When it comes to boundary conditions, boundary conditions uh, gives us the temperature details on the surface of the body or at the surface of the body. Every body consisting surfaces at every surface or at any surface what is uh, the temperature of the body that possessed by the body that is given by the boundary conditions and these boundary conditions are helpful uh, for solving uh, uh, the heat transfer process uh, in steady state. This is about initial and boundary conditions. We are going to uh, learn uh, how to use the initial and boundary conditions in order to solve the differential equations uh, in the uh, next videos. For now, the initial and boundary conditions, uh, the details are this. The initial conditions gives us the temperature details at the beginning of the process. The boundary conditions gives us uh, the temperature details at the surface of the uh, body of the system through which heat transfer takes place. Right? Moving on, uh, the next topic is a uh, study and unsteady or transient uh, heat transfer. Right? So the before going to the study and unsteady state uh, heat transfers, uh, let us uh, uh, discuss like this. The temperature which flows through a body is depending on uh, the space and time variables right we already learned from a Fourier's law of uh, heat transfer that uh, q is equal to minus k into a into dt by dx which means uh, q the heat transfer rate uh, is directly proportional to dt the temperature change in temperature or temperature and uh, that temperature now is a uh, uh, depends on uh, the space and uh, time variables right which means uh, the heat transfer is directly influenced by the space and uh, time right the heat transfer depends on the temperature and the temperature depends on space and time due to which the heat transfer may be 
depending on space and time as well we can uh, write uh, the above statement uh, as a capital T is a function of uh, x y z and t well x y z are the space variables small t is time variable suppose if it is a uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates then the temperature is a function of x y z if it is a cylindrical coordinate temperature is a function of r phi and z if it is a spherical coordinates the body is in the, then the temperature is a function of uh, r theta and phi along with time small t right temperature is a function of the space variables x y z and the time t moving on uh, now let us uh, see what is a uh, the steady state heat transfer the steady state heat transfer is uh, simply defined as uh, the change in temperature with respect to time if is equal to zero then uh, such heat transfer process is called steady state heat transfer also that can also be uh, that can also be defined as uh, the temperature at every point in a body or the system is constant throughout the time uh, the heat transfer takes place then uh, such a body is said to be under steady state the temperature should be constant throughout, throughout the time there should be no change in temperature with respect to change in time then uh, the body is said to be under steady state as long as uh, the body is in steady state we can write this as a uh, dt by dt is equal to zero the change in temperature with respect to change in time dt if equal to zero if there is no change at all in temperature with respect to time then uh, such a process is called steady state heat transfer then uh, the temperature now only become the function of uh, space variables t is a function of x y and z temperature is a function of x y z space variables it is no longer depends on the time the steady state heat transfer will uh, uh, if uh, the body is under steady state the heat transfer rate is constant or the heat exchange rate is constant and also the change in the internal energy of your body is also constant there is no change at uh, there is not no variation in the uh, change in internal heat generation from your body the best example for steady state heat transfer is uh, the electrical wires uh, that uh, we have in our homes you know the electrical wires uh, mostly made up of copper uh, the electricity when flows through these wires the electricity means uh, electricity means the flow of electrons the metallic uh, copper offers some resistance against this uh, flow of electrons due to which uh, the internal heat will be generated uh, in the cables right the heat is generated now and that heat is uh, dissipated to the surroundings as long as uh, the electrons flowing through the wires uh, the quantity is constant the heat generation rate is also constant throughout and so the heat dissipation rate is also constant right as a no change in internal energy the heat dissipation rate or the heat transfer rate or the heat exchange rate is constant throughout that is considered as best example of steady state heat transfer with respect to time at any time at any span of time or at the given interval of time the change in temperature is zero as there is no internal heat generation there is no variation in heat the temperature remains constant throughout for the given amount of time so dt by dt will become zero so the body is under steady state this is about steady state heat transfer moving on uh, the unsteady state heat transfer it is quite a uh, uh, reverse to the steady state in unsteady state heat transfer the body's temperature changes uh, with respect to time at any point as uh, at all the point uh, at any point in your body for the given time interval the temperature changes we can write this as a dt by dt is not equal to zero the change in time with respect to change in temperature is not equal to zero there will always be some change in time with respect to temperature then uh, temperature 
will become a function of uh, x, y, z space coordinates as well as the time. As a uh, in an uh, unsteady state heat transfer, the temperature changes. The internal heat energy that is uh, generated is also changes with respect to time. That I said, unsteady state heat transfer is quite reverse to the steady state heat transfer. Right? Uh, the example for the, this unsteady state heat transfer will be uh, the temperature variation of a wall throughout the day. In a day, uh, the temperature varies. In the morning, we have less temperature when compared to afternoon. In afternoon, we have a high temperature when compared to evening. Right? Like that. Throughout the day cycle, the temperature varies. If a wall is exposed to the sunshine in a day, then uh, in the morning the wall has less temperature in the afternoon it uh, possesses high temperature in the evening again uh, its temperature falls so from the given span of uh, 8 hours or uh, 12 hours the temperature changes there will be some change in temperature with respect to time so the wall is under unsteady state heat transfer this is the example for unsteady state heat transfer moving on uh, these steady and unsteady heat transfers may be uh, applied to different uh, bodies having different dimensions. If it is a one dimensional uh, body, then the heat transfer takes place through that one dimensional body. The temperature is only function of uh, one dimension. Let us say that is x in steady state. If it is unsteady state, then temperature is a function of uh, one dimension along with time. If it is a two-dimensional uh, heat transfer, then uh, for such bodies, temperature is a function of uh, two dimensions, x and y. As uh, if it is a uh, cylindrical coordinates, as theta. As uh, uh, spherical coordinates, uh, uh, as uh, theta, as uh, theta phi, like that. But I generalized and uh, here it is written x and y. If it is unsteady state two-dimensional heat transfer, temperature is uh, depends on uh, two dimensions x and y along with time t. If it is three dimensional heat transfer, then the temperature is a function of x, y, z as well as uh, the unsteady state heat transfer depends on these x, y, z along with time t. This is about the steady and unsteady heat transfer and the dependence on the, the space and time variables by the temperature. Thank you.